Hello, my third grade friends. This is Mrs. Smith here. Today we are doing Unit 7, Lesson 7, which is on page 385. So we're talking about equivalent fractions on number lines. Now, if you think about it, when you have your fraction strips, if you were to uh, look at it instead of this way, but this way, it kind of looks like an, a line, right? So keep that in mind. It's the same concept, just flattened. So uh, we're going to break each of these number lines into where they belong on a, like between zero and one. So here it says halves. That means we're trying to make two halves. So first, I need to find the spot that is going to have equal size pieces from here to here. Now we're human, so we need to be, you know, forgiving and understanding with ourselves. I think about right here is one half. Where is two halves? Right here, right? Because it's equal to one. It's all of the halves that it takes to make one. All right, here's the one third mark. That means we need to have two thirds and then three thirds. So that's gonna be about the same size. I like to use my fingers to help me measure like that, but right there, two thirds. And this is three thirds. All right, fourths. Now I know my two fourths is gonna be equivalent to one half. And then this one I'm gonna break into half again, right about there. And that's my three-fourths line, and my four-fourths is right here on the one. Six. I know two-six is going to be right underneath that one-third line. Three-six is going to be right underneath the half. Four-six is going to be about here, and five-six is going to be about here. I'm going to try to visually space them out just to make sure I'm not making one extra small. Actually, 4, 6 is going to be underneath the two-thirds line, too. So 4, 6, 5, 6, and then where's 6, 6? Right there. 6, 6. Last one, 8. So I'm going to use as much of this as I can. So my 4, 8 is going to be underneath my half line. My 2, 8 is going to be underneath my fourth line. My three fourths is going to be above where my six eighths is because you multiply both of these numbers by two. It's just, you know, more pieces, but it's equivalent there. So then I just need to add my three eighths there between the second and the fourth, and then my fifth eight between my fourth and my sixth, and then my seventh eighth between my sixth and my eighth eighth. All right, if you need more time to write these in, go ahead and pause. And just remember, the key thing is that you're trying your best to make each piece of the fraction the same size as the other uh, unit fractions of that denominator. So now we're gonna write an equivalence chain with fractions that equal two halves. So an equivalence chain is just a bunch of equal signs with equivalent values in between. So two halves equals one, which equals uh, one over one, right? Which equals three over three, which also equals four over four, which also equals five over five, equals six over six, which equals seven over seven, and eight over eight, and 9 over 9, oopsie, not 19, 9 over 9, and 10 over 10, and 100 over 100, and all numbers over themselves, right? That's the whole, that's the whole thing. Okay, uh, why are the fractions in the equivalence chain for 2, for two over 2 equal? Because, well, let's just say, they all equal one whole. Why does the length of unit fractions grow smaller as the denominations or the, the numbers get larger? 
because there has to be more pieces in the same size hole, right? Simply put, if you have a whole sandwich all by yourself, you get a big, you know, chunk of sandwich, and then if you have to share it with one other person, now there's two pieces and yours is smaller, and if you have to share that sandwich with 10 people, the sandwich size didn't change, but now you just get like a little bit of the sandwich and you're probably still gonna need more lunch. Okay, now moving on to the other side of the page, it wants us to write fractions that equal one half. So equal to one half, we have two fourths, three sixths, and four eighths. And basically for all of these, the numerator, oopsie, you can't see, the numerator is half of what the denominator is, right? That's why it's equal to one half. So one half equals two fourths equals uh, three sixths equals four eighths. Could you guess how many hundredths? What's half of a hundred? Fifty, so fifty hundredths or 100 over 200, right? With fractions that equal one third. So you have one third equals, let's see, that's two sixths. What if you double both of those numbers to cut them into more pieces but be the same amount? Four twelfths. Three ninths, if you multiply that by three. What else? Hmm. What's another number set where if you multiply um, that number by three, you get the bottom number? Well, how about five fifteenths? Okay, fractions that equal two thirds, we're just gonna double all these, right? So two thirds equals Four sixths, doubling the numerator, equals eight twelfths, equals six ninths, equals ten fifteenths. And there are more. For these, I'm not listing all of them, right? There are plenty more. Uh, with fractions equal to one fourth, let's do one fourth equals how many eighths? Two eighths equals, let's see, four sixteenths, five twentieths, nine thirty-sixths. You'll notice I'm just using some of my math facts to think, hmm, what times four equals what? You can use any of them. Ten fortieths, eleven forty-fourths. Fractions that are equal to three-fourths, Okay, that would be uh, six eighths if you double both of those. Oh, let me start with three over four equals six over eight. Or let's see, if we're trying to make twelves, nine over twelves. We could do thirty fortieths. We could multiply them both by twenty-five and do seventy-five one hundredths. And then eight over eight, that's gonna be anything that's equal to one, right? Eight over eight, because that's all of the pieces. Equals one, equals two over two, equals three over three, equals four over four, equals uh, 900 over 900, equals uh, 5,000 over 5,000, any number over itself is equal to one. Okay, now we're gonna try to solve some of these problems and if you need some help with me, please, or with these, please ask me if I'm your teacher or ask an adult or your own teacher if you have a different teacher than me. Solve, use what you've learned about equivalent fractions and about comparing fractions. So Jamie has half a dozen red marbles and 
of uh, four eighths of a dozen green marbles. Does he have more red or green marbles? So because we're comparing dozens to dozens, we're just looking at the fraction. So half and four eighths. If you need to, you can pull out your fraction strips. There's half, and then here's my eighth. So four eighths, one, two, three, four, lines up perfectly, right, with one half, which means he has the same of each. Uh, he has the same of each. Tried to trick you with that one. Okay. Nancy buys three six pound of walnuts. Sandra buys three quarters pound of walnuts. Now, with this one, if you just look at the numerator, they're the same, right? The numerator is the same for both of those. This one is in more pieces. That hole has been broken into six pieces, where this hole has been broken into four pieces, which means each of these pieces is bigger. So three bigger things is more altogether than three smaller things. So that means Sandra bought more nuts. Okay. Last one here. Chin and Maya collected shells at the beach. They both used the same kind of basket. Chin collected three-fourths basket and Maya collected three-thirds basket. So here, once again, they have the same numerator. Also, you'll notice Maya did the whole basket and Chin did not do the whole basket, which means, what's more? If they have the same size basket, Maya did more. All right, that's it for now. Uh, join me next time for Unit 7, Lesson 8. All right, everybody, bye-bye.